Find the Maclaurin series for f of x equals the sine of 3x times the cosine of 3x. Solution. If we just use the power series for sine x and then the power series for cosine, then we actually have to end up multiplying the power series, and that's usually very cumbersome. So recall a familiar trigonometric identity. If you have the sine of 2x, that's equal to 2 sine x cosine x. So we want to somehow use this equation to match what we have here. Well, first, you'll notice that we don't have a 2 here, so let's go ahead and divide both sides by 2. So we can write this as 1 half sine 2x. And on the right-hand side, we'll just have 2's canceling, so sine x cosine x. Now, we almost have what we want. Here we have sine x cosine x, but up here we have sine 3x cosine 3x. So let's replace the x with 3x. We're going to replace every copy of x with 3x. So this is 1 half sine of 2, and then x is really 3x. And on the right-hand side, we'll have sine 3x cosine 3x which is what we want. This is our f of x. So writing this again, let me come over here and write this on the left-hand side. f of x is equal to sine 3x cosine 3x. And this is equal to 1 half sine of, well, 2 times 3x is 6x. All right, so now we're in a really good place because now we can use the formula. Recall that the sine of x is equal to the infinite sum as n runs from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n. And the way I memorize the formula is, well, I know there's always a negative 1 to the n. Sine is an odd function, so the exponent is an odd number. So it looks like 2n plus 1. If it was cosine, you would just have a 2n, and that's because cosine is even. It's just a cheap trick to memorize the formula. So sine is odd, so we're going to have odd powers of x. All right, now we can use the formula. This is 1 half the infinite sum as n runs from 0 to infinity. And here we have 6x, so that's not really going to affect the negative 1 to the n. So we still have the negative 1 to the n. But this is our x. This is what's going to get replaced here. So instead of x to the 2n plus 1, we actually have 6x to the 2n plus 1. And in the denominator, we still have 2n plus 1 factorial. I suppose we could stop here, but I think that's kind of sloppy. Let's maybe keep going and simplify this a little bit. First note that 6x to the 2n plus 1 can be written as 6x to the 2n times 6x to the 1 using properties of exponents. And you can break this down even further. You can write this as 6 to the 2n. Actually, there was an easier way to do this, but it's too late. <laughs> x to the 2n, 6x to the 1. So this is 6 to the 2n plus 1 x to the 2n plus 1. We could have just done that right from the beginning. Uh, I'm not sure why I took this approach. It doesn't matter. Let's keep going. So this is equal to 1 half the infinite sum as n runs from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n. And then we agreed that we can write this using properties of exponents. You can go straight from here to here. So this is 6 to the 2n plus 1, x to the 2n plus 1. And this is all being divided by 2n plus 1 factorial. You could probably do some more simplification. You can break this down further and then you, you know, multiply through the 1 half, etc. But I think that's good. I hope uh, this video helps. Normally when you see a problem like this, you always want to think about identities because doing this using just this formula and the one for cosine and then multiplying is very, very challenging. I hope this helps.